I thought today would be a perfect time to wear my house earrings because this video is gonna be so incredibly magical, or at least hopefully that's the intention. Hello friends, happy Wednesday. So very excited that you're here. It is top five Wednesday and it's gonna be such a fun prompt. I'm really, really excited for this. But in case if you're not familiar with top five Wednesday in a nutshell, basically I answer a prompt using five books, but in this case I do manga to reflect the said prompt. And today's prompt is magic. And I am just so excited about this because a few days ago, I think it was this past Sunday actually, was National Unicorn Day. So sort of an honor, low key honor of that holiday. We were just talking about books that have magic in them. All of my picks definitely have it, but I was sort of surprised that I don't actually have like a lot of magical reads. I don't know if it's just because I'm slowly starting to get back into fantasy because I was super into fantasy novels for a really long time. And then when I started reading manga, I noticed I really love high school contemporary romance. Like that is my jam. That's my cup of tea. And if it's fluffy, even better. And so I was just, I still am, but I was super on that hype train. Again, I still am, but I have slowly been getting into to fantasy and it's been really really exciting because I'm like I forgot how great fantasy is so Almost all of these reads are fantasy minus one, and I guess we can go ahead and start with that one. I wasn't gonna start with that one for a different reason, which I'll talk about when I get to that pick. So for number one, this felt like the perfect opportunity to talk about that, and that is My Father is a Unicorn, and I'm featuring this because unicorn. Had to go with the theme with National Unicorn Day, even though technically that's not today. But I love this manga. I have not talked about it in a long time. I still need to do a review on this channel because this is probably one of my low-key favorite manga. I've read it probably, I think I've read this one more, but I would say it rivals Daily Report about my witch senpai because I've read volume two in that series like four or five times. Like no, no lie. I don't know what it is about that volume. I just love it so much. I love the series, but specifically that volume I love the most. And I do have a review if you like to check it out. I wouldn't say this, I was about to say this volume isn't very magical, but dude, his stepdad here can turn into a unicorn and that is pretty magical. And there's some really fun shenanigans. Like one of my favorite shenanigans that happens in this, the father finds out if he uses his horn in the water that his stepson drinks, it will like make his face like super cl clear. Like he'll have no breakouts or anything. And of course, some people find out about this and they really, really, really want it. It is a very humorous story. Like he's trying to cut and he's like, what are you doing? And it is, oh, it's so great. Or like when he's ironing his shirt, like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. And there's even people they are like, it sounds like he has a horse over there. And they're like, no, no, there's no horse at all. Obviously there is, obviously there is. It's so fun. The expressions, I just found one. Like here, right here, this is what I was talking about. And he's like, what ritual is this? But this is a perfect example and that's how he finds out. Sorry guys, I was trying to find the other page that had the, here we go, here we go. Like the art is just so great. So this isn't like, this isn't a fantasy read, but it does have those fantasy elements and it definitely plays around a lot with the unicorn lore in general, especially the end with the step, or with the mother, I should say, not the stepmother. I thought that was so funny. It's a fun one-shot manga that I would definitely recommend, especially if you love unicorns. I feel like unicorns do not get much hype or maybe appreciation or spotlight in manga. I don't know why that is. Dragons tend to win out. And I feel like that's true even in like regular novels that you're just not gonna, or fantasy novels, the dragons are always gonna win. So if you need a unicorn manga, this is your manga to check out. For number two, this was gonna be my number one originally because before this video, when I was choosing out my picks, I started reading this and I love this manga so incredibly much. I gushed about it in my March reading wrap up and that is The Villainous Stands the Heroes Playing the Antagonist to Support Her Faves. Oh, I love this so much. Like honestly, I, I just feel if I were ever to like suddenly get reincarnated into an Otome game and I needed to tell somebody what I would be like, it probably would be this manga. Like, I just feel so seen. Like, when she talks about her best boy, like, yes. She's like, you're my number one fave. You're my best boy. Like, oh my goodness. That would be me in an Otome game, hands down. Though, Grant, I don't know how well I would do with the villainous role. But this is, yes, a villainous manga. But I have not read one super recently that's coming, like, right to mind where it has magic in the actual story. I'm not going to say what 
all the magic is because there is one person that has magical abilities that I did not expect and it was a nice pleasant surprise so I'm not going to say what that is. However, I will say that we do find out that our, our main girl here has shadow magic and it does play a role and I absolutely loved it and I don't know what to say else about the magic because I don't know, I was not expecting that. I mean, I guess when you find out what this game is about that she was reincarnated into, I don't actually fully remember. I just remember how much I loved it, not what the actual Otome game is about. I know there's like a priestess or yeah, I'm pretty sure she's a priestess and that plays definitely a huge role and just guys, it's so good. All of the characters are fantastic and the expressions like look at her like this is me. <laughs> This is me. Oh my goodness. That is why this was my number one favorite read of last month. I feel like what I was trying to say before is, yeah, that when you find out about the game, I think it's definitely implied that you know that there's going to be magic, but I still just with this one certain character, I did not see it coming. That's about as vague as I can keep it, but just know that there, this does count for a magical read and that there is magic in it and I just love it so, so much. If you love villainous manga, villainous isekai, this is one do not pass especially if you would love to see the chance a character interacting with their favorites like it's so relatable it is so relatable and I feel like this just stands out against other villainous izakai because of the relatability I'm like girl I feel so seen because I'd be the same exact way and that is all I'm gonna say I am not gonna ramble anymore but just know eventually I will have a video review of this because I need everybody to go read this because I just love it so much going on to number three so I bought this before my manga buying bin and I was gonna wait till after and I got super bummed about it and I was like you know what? we're just gonna go ahead and buy it because a friend recommended this to me and that is the saints the saints magic power is omnipotent I hope I said that right because I had to go practice that <laughs> there's volume one and I bought volumes one through seven of the manga because originally this came on my radar because I think it was yeah it was right stuff they said if you like snow white with the red hair that you probably like this series and I'm like okay okay I see it right stuff because I actually really like snow with the red hair just disregard how far behind I am but Again, that's the one shoujo manga. If I could ever only pre-order one manga, Snow with the Red Hair would always be that manga. So it like went on my radar after that, and I was sort of like him and hawing because I didn't really know anybody who, who was reading it. And then my friend on Instagram, I saw her share it, and I was like, hey, what do you think about this series? Do you think I would like it? And do you know what she said? She said, if you like the Savior's Book Cafe, we're just gonna shorten that title, then she's like, you will like this. It has a slow burn romance, it has this easygoing, chill kind of story, and it has the magical element elements and I was like I'm sold but I was like you know I have not had the best success of binge buying a whole series and then liking the whole thing in fact that recently just happened with me with Night of the Ice I decided to drop that after two volumes I was really really bummed and I was like okay that was my last binge buy I did before the new year and I told myself we would not do that anymore so I checked out the first two volumes from my library I did not read it in its entirety I skim read it and I loved it I loved what I read I strongly agree that if you like I think Snow with the Red Hair, but I would say The Savior's Book Cafe is such a good comparison, then you will probably like this because she, is, our lady here, I think her name is Sei? S-E-I? Yeah. She was in her 20s and she was a workaholic and somehow she just gets transported, teleported, however you want to say it, to this other world where they're like, you are the magical saint here and you're basically going to save our land. But here's the thing, there was somebody else that came during the whole ritual process and they don't choose her. It looks in a appears that she's the actual saint because she has these magical abilities. She's learning how to make potions, like healing potions and such for the people in this world. Her abilities are amazing. Like they're OP. <laughs> they're OP. But you know, the, the prince here is like totally wants nothing to do with her. And so this is her story of in this world and how she does remind or does remind me of Snow White in the sense that she loves to learn. She's always learning. She's always discovering new things or trying to discover new things. And it is very much a chill, magical story that I just was super hooked in or hooked on, I should say. I decided though that I'm not going to read this series just yet, despite that I really enjoyed it because I feel like after I read the Savior's Book Cafe. I feel like after I read that one, I am going to want something just like that. And this is going to be that read. Like I honestly am already planning and thinking that after that series wraps up, which is next month, hoping to do a video review because I loved volume one and I'm like, I'm not reading anymore until the final volume comes out. I'm very, very excited to try this. If you have read this series, please let me know. I know there's an anime. My husband was checking out the manga and I was like, look, I know that you watch anime faster than you read 
manga. I'm like, go watch the anime for me. I love the covers. I know there's a spinoff manga and I almost got it. I almost got it because it's about the other saint. And I said, no, you need to read this one first, see what you think, and then you can go read the other one because I did see mixed reviews, which I feel like is pretty expected because, I mean, she's the other saint and she's basically making, not making life harder for our main girl, but she's sort of the antagonist in a little, a little bit, though I don't think she's like a bad guy or anything like that. But I was like, we're gonna wait, see how we like her in this series, and then we'll go from there. Sorry guys, I felt like I got pretty rambly. Hopefully that made sense at the end. Sorry about that. Like, so let's go to number four, and I'm gonna be doing the Skull Dragon precious daughter shout out to my friend Maeve and Maeve ever reading because she shared about this and she was like if you like Rosie from Rosie in the Labyrinth which I have a review of she's like you'll probably like this I'm like done I'm sold I think we had chat a little bit she's like I'm surprised you didn't pick this up and I remember when the license announcement came out from yeah seven C's it was on my radar and then I just forgot I don't know what happened, but I just forgot. So thank you, Mae, for sharing about this because funny thing, and I had to go apologize to my friend Carrie at Nerdy Girl Creates because we're on a manga buying ban together and I broke my manga buying ban to go get this. But here's the thing. I know I shouldn't give excuses and justify why I did it. I... I mean, I feel bad, but I don't feel bad because I had to go take my son to a birthday party and it was like literally like five minutes away from the bookstore and the bookstore is pretty far out from where we live. So like the bookstore, if we're near there, like it's, you have to go because the bookstore is right there. So my husband encouraged me actually to go. And so I went, they had this and I was skim reading it and I loved it. It's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Our main little girl Eve is just so adorable, but like her story is really sad because she, I don't know if it was like on purpose. Again, I skim read it because I didn't want to like I knew if I started reading reading I would sit down at the store and I need to go home and cook dinner and not just sit at the store and read but our main girl here Eve like she's pretty young at the beginning like super young and she gets dropped into this place where all the trash goes and I'm like she just got dropped off and the thing is she lands right next to a dragon now as you can see this dragon looks pretty you know just skulls, a skull, bones, you know, but he is a full dragon at that time. He has a skin and everything and they form a really tight bond and it was so adorable. They have some shenanigans that unfold throughout the volume and their friendship, it's like a father-daughter relationship and it is so beautiful and so sweet. I was very much sold. It looks like there's some great humor because they end up going to a village and they meet this one guy, this guy here. And this guy seems really interesting. Like he has some interesting mischievous ways about him, like not in a bad way or anything, but I guess they're gonna sort of low key team up and I cannot wait to read more. This is definitely a magical story as well. We have dragons. Looks like there's a bunch of different other creatures. I'm just, I'm so excited to read it. And I'm so glad that Maeve recommended it to me because I love Rosie. That is a very sweet found family sto fantasy story that I would highly recommend. And this seems just really closely Along those lines. It's just the magic is a little bit different in this one compared to Rosie. I have no doubts that I'm gonna really love this one because I've already super enjoyed what I read. I mean, I was willing to break my manga buying ban to get this because there was another manga that I was gonna get, but I, I wasn't fully on board with it. I wasn't I wasn't hooked, so I, I like put it back. But this one, I was like, because like Laura's like, you could go home, you don't have to do this. I was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. So I was really excited to feature this one today. For now. Number five, yes, this has to be on here, and that is Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Shout out to my friend Blue World. This feature is for you. I do have a manga review coming, friends, of this, because there was some hot takes that happened recently, and I said, um, I said no. I said we need to write a or we need to film a positive video review of this, and people need to know that this is really, really good. Now, I read chapters one and two when this first got released. It was getting serialized digitally on Amazon. I'm sure other platforms as well from Yen Press, though. I loved what I read, and shout out to my friend Mariah Jane because she's the one that put this on my radar and originally at first, and was like, "You will love it." I really loved the first two chapters, and I was like, "Man, I'm not this kind of reader that likes to." read just chapters week by week. I mean, I'll start out well with anything I ever start. Like Hello Baby is a perfect example. I mean, that's a webtoon. I was good for like three weeks and then I just fall off the bandwagon. And I think I just, I love reading it when we have enough chapters. I have plenty of chapters. I refused, not in a bad way, but I refused to watch the anime. So I don't know much because I told myself I'm waiting for the manga because if I watch the anime before I read the manga, I won't read the manga. So here we are. So I know that this has some favorites. 
fairies. Our guy here is definitely a fairy, and we have a fairy here, and we have another fairy. Yep, we have this cute little guy right here. She makes like these really beautiful sweets and there's some kind of magical essence or some there's something magical about these. Yes, it does contain a magical energy called essence. So I was I was sort of close. But the art is absolutely stunning. I mean look oops sorry look at this. Goodness gracious, it's so beautiful and I'm really excited. So I don't remember too much from what I read. I mean, it's been well over a year. So it was really exciting that to see that we're getting a physical manga and I think it's just really beautiful. I like this brown. I usually wouldn't say that that would work, but it works. I'm excited to see where the story goes. I, at least I love the first two chapters. So I have no doubts I'm gonna really love this. I know Blue World and Mariah, they both said like, you're going to love this. And that's why I'm gonna do a video review next week. Sorry, I'm not saying much on this except I know it has magic because it has fairies so I just have to read it to find out. Now for my honorable mention I'm also really really excited about this one and oh my goodness and that is Twisted Wonderland the manga volume one. I cannot wait for this to release. I have been playing the game and I am so invested. I have so many faves. I finally completed the first book in the game because it goes by different books and it is so it was so good. I was like wow like this blew my mind. I was shocked by the twist and turns that it has very excited we're getting the manga. You will hear me gushing so much about it because I think for that specific house, it's one of my favorites, if not my favorite, because I really like Cater, Trey, Deuce, Ace. I really liked Riddle by the end. Those are the characters that are actually in the house and that they are very prominent and very important characters. I'm trying to think of how to explain it because I'm like, I'm getting so excited because I just love the game. The premise of the game, and I guess you would say for the manga is that, well, okay, let's just talk about the game because for the game, you, the player, have been brought to this academy, Night Raven Academy, and everybody there has magic, but you don't. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty awkward. And so there's some shenanigans that unfold. You can't go back home. And so here you are stuck and you get to, in and you interact in the beginning with these characters. One of them is named Grim, and I love Grim. He's amazing. But also for the very beginning, you interact with Deuce and Ace, and that is who you're sort of with in the manga. I don't know how much else to say because I don't want to spoil it, but the big part of the whole thing Thing is what I should have said at the beginning besides getting all excited here is that the game takes the bad villains in different Disney films and makes them basically look like the good guy in this game and so you have these dorms you could think of sort of like Harry Potter houses but they're based off of the different villains you have the Queen of Hearts Hades from the underworld and Hercules Mufasa I'm missing a few others Ursula and it's been really interesting seeing how like we know from the movies that they're bad guys, but the characters are like, oh, they did a really great thing. Really interesting. It's been so much fun. I love it so much. I have volume one pre-ordered. It's a very magical story. If you definitely like Alice in Wonderland and you want to see this unique twist where they're in a dorm and they really honor the Queen of Hearts and one of the antagonists is very similar to the Queen of Hearts for reason, for magical reasons that unfold, you must check it out. Check out the game. The game is free. I had no idea it was available in the U.S. until some friends told me on Instagram and I have been hooked ever since. All right, friends, I'm gonna wrap it up there because I know I rambled quite a bit near the end, especially about Twisted Wonderland, which I love so very much. I would love to know though, if you play the game, what are some of your favorite characters? Or maybe you haven't played the game, but you've seen the characters. Let me know, let's gush. Even if it's not my favorite, I would love to hear your favorites. Also, what are some of your favorite magical reads that you have read? Do you like unicorns? Do you like dragons? Do you like both? Do you have a preference for which one is better? Let me know again, I would love to hear from you and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye